Let's go! Oh yes, we're chilling out, baby. Mailbag, responding to some of the best comments on all our deep content from the week. And Dev, I gotta shout out Dev right here, showing BJO Jalari some serious love. And I'm loving Dev, man. He's got the white forces, got a nice lineup there. Dev, who is your barber, my guy? Anyway, um, look, I think we are really sleeping on BJ Ojolari big time. You look at any starting lineup that is projected for LSU, the defensive ends are Andre Anthony and Ali Gay. So, should BJ Ojolari actually be starting and are we sleeping on him? Well, let's take a look. So, ironically, to me, B.J. Ojolari's most impressive play actually came on the only touchdown Vanderbilt scored last year. Now, what's very interesting about B.J. Ojolari is, well, this wasn't even his clutches play. He had a huge, huge pressure against Kyle Trask and the Florida Gators in crunch time. But this is one of the most impressive pass rushing moves you'll ever see from a true freshman. So you get B.J. Ojolari going right here, and you notice he sets this guy up. We, we've actually broken this play down before in a video. But you notice he just sets this left tackle up, and you notice he fires off, and I'm a former defensive lineman, a pass rusher. See how he fires off high, and he sets this guy up with these array of arm moves, and you see this left arm extends, we're getting this left tackle leaning, which is obviously bad pass pro technique as an offensive tackle. And you notice when he leans, B.J. Ojolari dips. Look at his body. It's at a complete 45-degree angle, okay? Probably 99% of college true freshman defensive ends don't have this ability to bend like this. This is Vaughn Miller type of stuff, and he bends around the corner and believe it or not, this should have been a sack before the touchdown, but Vanderbilt gets away with one of the most egregious holds you'll ever see. And B.J. Ojolari, instead of getting a big-time strip sack, seals their quarterback, throws their only touchdown uh, on Cordell Flott here in the slot. I believe this was Cordell Flott. Either way... Um, that was pretty impressive. So yeah, you know, here here are my thoughts on B.J. Ojolari going into next year. He is a true sophomore. He's got two really experienced guys. I think just using him as a third down specialist as first uh, at first uh, is probably the smart move. You know, he's still got a lot of football ahead of him. He's only a true sophomore, so you have him for at least two more seasons. Uh, he's 6'3". He's got perfect NFL size to be a pass rushing uh, end at the next level. And just by that move alone, you see his pass rushing capability. So, Dev, you are right. And and we mentioned that in our top five piece as well. B.J. Ojolari's ceiling could be the best player on the team next season. So, yes, why not? I, I love studying pass rushers. It's the absolute funnest thing for me. Um, you know, this is interesting. So B.J. Ojolari is lined up here at this right defensive end, and you notice he is not in a three-point stance. He is actually in a Von Miller two-point stance. Sometimes, of course, Vaughn is in a three-point stance. Um, but yeah, this is the basically him playing a standing outside linebacker, and you see LSU in this race car package. So this looks to be Andre Anthony, uh, I can't tell who this is, and Ali Gay, this could be your cheetah race car package. So on third and goal or third and long, you put in four defensive ends to rush the passer or three defensive ends and one DT. And what's interesting was in the spring game, B.J. Ojolari, when he was lined up on the right, uh, he had his right hand down instead of his left hand down. And normally, you know, this was my preference, and this is how most defensive ends actually line up. The you, If you're on the right defensive end side, you have your left hand in the ground. It said Ojolari had his right hand in the ground. And I'm not going to lie, and I, I, I know this could be a sore subject, Dare Rosenthal did pretty well against B.J. Ojolari. So it could be something that LSU thinks about. If Ojolari on the right side is more comfortable firing off uh, from a two-point, let him do it. So yes, this is our race car package. This is Ray Thornton. So we have four defensive ends here. And this pass rush move right here from Ojolari is just fantastic. Look at how tight he bends this edge to the point where he put his 
hand on the ground to, you know, keep his balance. And Andre Anthony, of course, is getting some, I mean, Andre Anthony. Ali Gay's also getting some good pressure here as well. Ojolari turns the corner, and we get this pressure, and he almost brings him down. That's really good stuff there. And it's going to be interesting. You know, as far as Ojolari is concerned going into next season, good job by Ray Thornton, uh, who transferred no longer with the team to help clean this up. Good job by Andre Anthony not giving up on the play. It's going to be interesting next year because um, – Last year, LSU did play more. Um, I also want to uh, go on ahead and just show you this here on first down. So this is more of a traditional look, and Ojolari's not on the field. I want you to see on this twist stunt right here on this first play, Jaqueline Roy getting some good pressure right up the middle and almost making the sack and forcing to throw the football away. And that's why Jaqueline Roy was on my top five players list. You look at his stats, it was only 18 tackles, but, you know, his Florida tape was really good. The The only issue, though, is when you play more mobile quarterbacks, it does change the way you can pass rush. Uh, but this overall is just fantastic. They ran a, um, a, a loop stunt here right up the middle. So, um, Jaqueline Roy's job is to come in and just blow this up and then get Neil Farrell coming around this edge right here, and it worked. Not only not only did Jaclyn Roy fool this guard and open up things for Neil Farrell, he was also able to blow up this double team. You can't run a loop stunt any better than that. And that's the interesting thing about LSU is against Florida, their stunts not only worked, they were able to generate pressure just with four. Uh, but once again, as we've broken down in quite a few film studies for the Florida game. And if you want to see what went wrong as far as pass coverage is concerned, you need to go check out our pass defense week because LSU was generating consistent pressure all game long. That's some really good stuff there from Jaquel and Roy. Oh, I'm not going to lie. We kind of got carried away there, okay? So blame Dev, okay? I could talk about defensive line play all day. It's by far my favorite position, but here's the thing. Pass rush and turnovers could be overrated, okay? That was all a part of the pass defense week, and I'll, I'll link them all down below. Now, uh, we'll get to as many comments as we can, including this from Michael. Excellent breakdown, Carter, on our Max Johnson film study. I expect defensive coordinators will squeeze the field and dare Max to throw to the outside from the far hash, sending up possible picks. This is a quandary that LSU uh, is going to have next season as far as the defense is they're going to play. I It's not just on the outside. Max Johnson, we did a film study on this separately from the film study year. Uh, Max also did not attack the deep middle all that much. But overall, he was a really good thrower uh, as far as intermediate throws are concerned. But outbreaking routes were an issue and throwing that on time. And all that just comes down to is confidence and stepping into your throws and just believing in yourself you don't have to have the strongest arm but if, if you don't you do have to be a little bit more anticipatory and on top of that you know uh, the max film shows that he likes to lock on Kayshawn sometimes so you better expect defensive coordinators are going to force him to go to second and third reads especially behind an offensive line that looks to be a little shaky uh, maybe they're better next season, but that's what defensive coordinators are going to do. So you're going to see a lot of too high. You're going to see a lot of safety help over the top on Kayshawn, and they are going to force Max to find someone, someone else, which is why on this channel I have been standing Jeray Jenkins so much because if you have a strong number two that could stretch the field, Jeray Jenkins is both of those things. The advanced analytics loves Jeray Jenkins. I love Jeray Jenkins from the tape study. And I understand this has kind of become Jeray Jenkins week, not only on this channel, but other media appearances that I've made. And I'm going to stick by it. You know, he's, to me, a really good player. And, you know, they're, they're, they're going to force Max to go through progressions. It's not going to be like Ole Miss where Kayshawn's just going to be open on your very first read. And just overall, Max missed some throws in that game on first read as well, which is why we did the film study earlier this week on Max Johnson in the red zone versus Ole Miss. So, Michael, you're actually spot on. They are going to force Max 
to not only beat them with their arm, they're also going to force the LSU running game to also beat them at the same time, giving LSU light boxes. So, to start the season, I think LSU is going to see a lot of simple defensive looks, and they are going to force Max to physically beat them, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I believe in Max. I think he will take that next step and be pretty good. I don't know if he's going to be elite in year two. And you look historically, LSU in the modern era has never had an elite year two starter. In fact, it has been the opposite. So hopefully Max breaks that trend. Here's Snow with the question about Quincy Wiggins and recruiting. You notice we haven't done a whole lot of recruiting stuff on the channel. Because we're getting ready to have a season. You know, recruiting to me is more of like an off-season kind of thing. And then you get closer to signing day and you start picking back up on recruiting. I don't think recruiting is really that important right now. I think LSU's focus should, and, and, our, and, and us as fans, once again, you could focus on whatever. There's some of you that just like recruiting, and I totally get it. It's fun. It's exhilarating. But... Just focus on the current team because the current guys currently on the roster really need your help. But as far as Quincy Wiggins is concerned, he's obviously really talented. On the other end, though, LSU is super deep at defensive end. And there are some other edge prospects that they're going to be in the running for. Um, so, yeah, if you think Savian Jones, if you think Landa Jackson is going to be great, then uh, you should be fine at defensive end with at least two more years of Ojolari. Phillip Webb's coming along. Maybe Jarrell Cherry takes the next step. You never know. So LSU is looking pretty good at defensive end right now. Of course, they would like the land Quincy Wiggins. He's right there in Baton Rouge. You don't want him going to another West school and terrorizing your backfields. But right now, that shouldn't be too, too, too much of your focus. And here with Debbie, Landa Jackson, golden on contact uniform for most of, you know, these last couple of practices. And since he's been at LSU because he is overcoming an injury, I like Landon Jackson a lot. I see him as a special teamer in year one, and maybe year two and year three, you start seeing him getting some snaps at defensive end or tight end uh, because he was a really good tight end in high school as well. And obviously, based on the depth chart, that is a far more bigger position of need right now. So, you know, right now I think LSU is going to focus him in on defensive end and more so get him ready for year two to potentially be a starter on the defensive line or just be a starter anywhere on the field. Hope you enjoyed this video today. Obviously, it's a little more laid back. We spent too much time on the defensive line. We tried to get to as many comments as we possibly can. But here's the cool thing. Every single video, we try our best to give you something new, something a little bit deeper. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe. And... Um, Look, we're doing a huge fantasy draft on Saturday night. And if you want more details on that and how you can play, you can watch this video right here. Yeah, floating in your face right now, our top five players and our Max Johnson film studies floating in the top left corner of your screen. It is Power Hour LSU Bomb. I think we're doing uh, takeout tonight from Lomain. Let's go.